Hello. Hello. Is someone on here facilitating? I was just going to ask if, if, what's, if your question? what's that? I didn't understand your question. Oh, I was just, uh, sorry, I, I'm not sure if the person I need to ask is on the call yet, but um, I was just wondering if tag security could go first as Eddie needs to drop at the half hour. Otherwise I can do it on my own, but just. I just... think Bob would be facilitating. Otherwise, Emily would lead. Okay, I'll, I'll, I'll wait for her to join then. So. Hi, Ali. I don't know. Hello, everyone. Hello. Um, I was just asking, I was wondering if there's any chance Tag Security could do the first of the two presentations as Eddie has to drop at the half hour. Otherwise I can do it on my own, which is totally fine too. I don't think okay. that would be an issue. Anyone yeah. have any qualms or concerns? None? So why? All right. Yeah, um, let's give everyone another minute. Gosh, I have a quick question. Is the art over your shoulder that like old Looney Tunes? Yes, it yes. is because that's Bugs Bunny. Your head was your head was blocking Bugs Bunny. All right. Yeah, that's that is actually a um, copy, um, uh, an authorized copy of a uh, full size painting made by Chuck Jones. That's awesome. That's awesome. Um, there used to be a Chuck Jones gallery not very far from the San Diego Convention Center. Um, if they hadn't moved, I would have taken people there when we did KuCon San Diego because it was awesome, but they moved. All right. Um, we've got 17 participants on the call. Let's go ahead and get started. Um, hello, everyone. Today is Tuesday, July 16th. You are at the public TOC meeting. Um, because you've made it, I'm going to assume you've got the logistics for attendance to this. Um, and today, uh, as a quick reminder, make sure you're abiding by the Linux Foundation's um, policies. And I'm forgetting what they are right now because I don't have the slide in front of me. <laughs> um, but today we've got a deep dive from Tag Security and Tag Contributor Strategy. Is that right? Got them? Yes. Cool. Um, we're going to have tag security go first because as I understand it, Eddie has to drop at, half, at the half hour and then we'll follow it up with tag contributor strategy. All right. I will turn it over to you, tag security. Great. Thank you. Um, I'm going to see if I can share my screen. Um, everyone sees something that looks like a GitHub roadmap. Awesome. Um, so I figured we'd just um, take you all through our roadmap, um, some updates, and go into some of the stuff we're working on. So um, I suppose we'll just go through, go through these. And if anyone has any questions, feel free to jump in and we can dive more into anything that folks are curious about. Um, so we have a couple of exploratory ones. Um, the research one, which is um, more or less inactive, I think we're mostly transitioning to the use of our blog um, from, our, from our website redo, which we'll get to. Um, as a place for folks in the research community to get involved. Um, and then we've also been talking since um, Cloud Native Security Con about an APAC region um, meeting, which we had at one point, but um, we ended up you know, spinning down. And so we're hoping to, we're looking into what that would look like if we are able to, to spin it back up again. So we're in some initial discussions there. Pretty exciting. Um, a couple of other new proposals. Um, there's this talk about doing a, a, a V3 of our cloud native security white paper. Um, hasn't quite spun up yet, but there's some, some interest there. Um, similarly with doing a 
Spanish translation of the V2 of the white paper. I think there's a Spanish translation of V1, but this would just be updating that for V2. Um, CNC mentorship, um, I'm not sure what that one is. It's a new proposal, I guess, to, to participate in that program. Um, and then working group health review, which is just a, a proposal that we've had among some of the leads to just go through all the work, various working groups in tax security and check on their status, make sure that everything should still be you know, an active working group or maybe spin down those that are no longer quite as active um, or even spin up new ones if there's new new areas that were, that were missing or anything like that. Um, evaluated proposals, uh, cloud native top 10, which I think um, based due to kind of lack of, um, I won't exactly say lack of interest, but lack of um, participation, I think that one might might be um, tabled for, for, for the future um, soon. Uh, still on here for now, but um, probably don't look for that soon. Um, uh, security baseline working group, um, this one, Wait, I think I just opened this one. This one was, oh yeah, this was this this one we're gonna talk about a bit more too. This is the working group to um to interact with the the open SSF and actually can kind of create better a better bridge between um, the work that we do as tag security and the work that the open SSF does more generally for open source security. Um and the idea here is to um you know create this bridge, um create like a um they don't call it a working group on their end. And you know that, but anyway, they're going to create some group in their organization, and then we'll, you know, cross cross pollinate there. Um, and this one in particular, we wanted to highlight um, for all of you, I think, as as a place where some signal boosting might be useful to make sure we get some participation in this in this bridge um, from our side as well as theirs. So, um, yeah, um, I can I can post this link in the chat after I after I'm presenting. Um, and then we're also um, undergoing a process to review our publication process. Um, I think we've had a lot of success with publications um, as a tag in the past, um, but one of our more recent ones had um, a few a few bumps. Um, the, this zero trust one, and so we're hoping to you know refine that process, smooth out those bumps for for future um, contributors. Marina, so, can you talk a little bit more about what those particular challenges were? I know that there's a lot of tags that produce paper content. Um, and as we've seen the rise of generative AI content, um, wondering what that impact is there, as well as adjudication of comments, socialization of content that might be relevant to other tags or community members for the accuracy of the material in the paper. Could you talk a little yeah. bit more about what those challenges were? Yeah, I think that last one is I think, very relevant to the challenges we had here, which was that the um, the paper ended up um, being written by like a very small group of our contributors um, with, I think, a, a less interaction with the leads and with the rest of the group than maybe would, ha would have been good. Um, and due to that, I think that they, they ended up writing a paper on their own. And then there were a lot of other people in the group who, after the paper was kind of more or less finished, had all these questions and concerns about the content. And so then it ended up being, I think, a more lengthy back and forth process between you know the original authors and various other members of the group because it was already kind of in this finished state when this conversation started. Um, and so I think making those expectations and communication channels better upfront um, would be good. Um, I think Eddie worked a lot more with them too if he wants to, to jump in with any of the other things that we're hoping to address with this process. Yeah, yeah, so... Um... One of the things that we're we've it's always been a policy, but it hasn't been um, really well implemented. Is that a um, a publication? It should be treated like a tag project, um, almost as if we created a working group for it, right? And in doing that, uh, by concept it should have a tag lead representative who is kind of sponsoring it and reporting back on the status of it um, and advising the, the group. And it should have a clear lead who is nominated by that um, that sponsor. And um, and there should be the, the, the normal level of check-ins and things like that. But uh, likely just due to a lack of enforcement um, that hasn't really been followed. Uh, and so our issues are less with like 
AI generated content and more with um, leadership properly supporting the creation of a publication so that a publication can know in advance if it's off track uh, and not work for two years and then suddenly get torpedoed when they're feeling like they're done, um, which is what has happened recently. And and so we're, we're working on just making sure that we can really clearly articulate the expectations and the standards that are, they're, the papers are going to be held to and and things like that. There, there are some unknowns there. Uh, so uh, by all means, um, 1321 is a very fresh, <laughs> very fresh issue uh, to just kind of open up this uh, exploration. Uh, so if you have more notes to add on that, uh, please definitely just like drop in there um, because we're we're I think the very first exploratory discussion for it is going to be on the 22nd um so it, it's it's very fresh and, and open to additional uh contribution for sure thank you okay um any other questions there questions comments that's, this is definitely a place that I think, um, and I think we can take our learnings here and maybe and share them back if other tags have um, have processes they're working on as well. Um, next, we have some active projects. Um, the cloud native security controls. I think this is maybe closer to wrapping up than active. I think they're they're working on um, they're they're finishing up getting the controls for the D two of the white paper, I believe. Um, yeah, this particular issue is actually closed, so that's probably. Um, can we move from this section, but um, we also have a V2 of the software supply chain best practices white paper um, put out by the group. Um, this this is well underway. We're um, I think finishing up the content section of the writing um, before moving on to you know some cleaning, some internal cleaning before going out to the broader tag and 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 other folks for review there. Um, so that's going pretty well. The Automated governance re reference architecture is a, a newer working group um, working on, you know, as, as the title says, a automated governance reference architecture. Um, they also have a draft document um, underway. I, th I think um, I think they have a lot of content right now that's still working on kind of getting that getting that into shape. Um, and the zero trust paper, which we alluded to earlier, which is wrapping up, I think we're in a couple, a couple final discussions before we are ready to, to get that published and out. So, um, yeah. So that one, I think um, you might be seeing soon as a, as, as a, as an output. Um, Similar with the Japanese translation, I think this one is actually under the. We're just trying to get the final PDF finalized for this. The actual translation part is all, it's all finished. Um, we had a recent project, a project very recently, kind of we, that we finished up in time for Cloud Native Security Con to kind of redo a lot of the content on our website and um, make sure that, that content um, reflects, you know, the current the current status of the group and all the great stuff going on. Um, and we also, as part of that project, are revital hoping to revitalize and use the the blog that's um, part of that website. And so we've gotten a few folks to start contributing blog posts to that. Um, I think, let me see, I have this website up here. Um, yeah, so lots lots of um, exciting exciting content here. Um, not, a, not, not a ton of posts so far, but we only just recently started. So something to, to watch out for. Um, I'll start one. Um, Marina, real quick. Um, I wanted to jump back to the automated governance route reference architecture. Yeah. Um, that issue is closed. So I assume that means that you have established a working group within the tag? Yes. So it's, it's closed as the working group is established, but there's ongoing work of doing the actual reference architecture. I think maybe we need a new issue as a... Okay. Uh, I'm, I was asking because one just wanted to understand where it was at. And traditionally, when we think about governance, we think about project governance around how it's operating, how does, what is the... Um, conditions for bringing on contributors and maintainers and things like that. So I'm trying to understand the difference between this work and what tag contributor strategy is doing, if there's an opportunity to kind of partner together on that, if it's aligned. Josh. Yeah, there might be. I know this is definitely closer to the compliance side of the the work that tag security does, um, you know, on the, on the security spectrum. 
Um, so yeah, I think it might be worth at least having a, having a chat between the leads of this group and and someone over there if there's yeah. to see if there's any alignment. Yeah, there is, there is overlap because one of the things that we do in our project governance review is look whether or not they have any automated code governance. Mm -hmm. um, uh, because obviously if a project has that in place, it can prevent a certain number of problems that otherwise have to be prevented manually. Um, the, um, uh, so be very interested in, in the outcome of this. Um, for that matter, very interested in finding routes for projects. Um, that are easier to implement um, because Prow is um, pretty effective. I mean, it's not, you guys are mainly focused on security rather than um, rather than authorization and uh, testing, but, but there's a lot of overlap. Prow is, is very, you know, comprehensive and effective, but most projects don't have the resources to run it. And um, the sheriff thing only looks at ownership and doesn't, um, you know, doesn't do other aspects. So be very interested in, in looking for um, other ways for smaller projects to have automated code governance. Um, yeah, so. that sounds like a great opportunity for some for some collaboration. Um, I think I, we, we can maybe set up something between the leads on this on this project, on this working group, um, and and some folks over there. Um, I think there's a link probably in here to their working doc as well, if you're interested. Here it is. Um, and taking a look. So this is linked in this issue. Um, but yeah, it might be worth um, sharing that out. Cool. Um, other things we have kind of wrapping up is Cloud Native Security Con. Obviously, the conference itself is actually finished, but this is just sitting here as we finish up, you know, retrospectives, anything else we as a tag can learn um, from that process. Um, and also wrapping up is this compliance working group um, within the tag. Um, the working group is spun up and created. Um, but again, this is just here as kind of a, a reminder for us to follow up with, with that and, and see how that's how that's going. Um, and a couple of things that are completed um, as well. Some of these a while ago, the supply chain security working group did a, a policy write-up. Um, and there was a security files project last last fall, really, that um, got a bunch of students involved in doing security reviews or security self-assessments, um, which, which, was, which was very exciting. So yeah, that's a very quick snapshot of kind of some of the active stuff going on in the group. Um, the other thing I have up here to take a look at is just our, the, the, you know, the more text version of, of the update we wrote this month, um, which has a couple other pieces that don't make it to the to our roadmap, um, such as these graduation recommendations that we've been working on. Um, and yeah, so- Can, so, you, can yeah. you talk a little bit more about those graduation recommendations? Yeah, so we've been actually we we recently have had a a number of projects uh, moving levels at different stages who've been presenting to the group. Um, Cert manager, I think we have that link up somewhere else. Um, we recently posted back on the TOC issue what the feedback was based on their presentation um, to the tag. Um, we've also, I think, somewhat relatedly, been working with the um, domain technical reviews group to kind of more formalize this process. Um, but I think this was one kind of successful case study of how that, that feedback can go. Um, yeah, I can pull up that exact recommendation if you're curious or. I, I can look it up. Those are on the, uh, cert manager application. Yeah. Okay. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, I should have linked to it here, but yes. <laughs> um, Yes, yeah, so upcoming stuff here. Yeah, a lot more of these project updates uh, coming up. So um, we're, I think this is a good chance for us to um, work with the domain technical review folks and really figure out what our process is because we have a lot of a lot of folks talking to us right now. Um, so those, those are the highlights I think from what we've been working on. Um, happy to go dive deeper into into anything, but. Um, uh, I want to open it up to the other two C members if they have questions, because I do have one more, but I realize I've been asking a lot of them. Duffy. 
So you said um, that you have a lot of people talking to you right now. I'm just wondering, like, you know, how's it going work distribution lies? Like, do you feel like you have enough people who are interested in being part of those conversations from the tag? Or do you feel like throttling that is necessary? Like, how, how are you, how's it going? Yeah, I think a lot is maybe a relative term. It's 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 less, you know, it's less than so only about five or six. It's not like not okay. twenty. Um, so I think so far yeah. we're doing good. Um, and I think the main thing is I think as long as they can be scheduled during our usual meetings and we don't have too many that we can't schedule them, you know, just like once a week. Um, I think that's fine because it takes about half the meeting. Folks are already there. Um, it usually usually goes pretty well as far as I'm nice. if we if it if it doubled in volume, we might. Um, we might just go slower. We might just slow projects down. Say we can't schedule you for a couple months, but for now it's not too bad. Yeah. Excellent. Other questions from TOC members? Okay. Um, how is the security assessments going? It's been a while since we've had a, a comprehensive update on any findings, any kind of progress updates. I see you've got eight that are currently waiting on project engagement. Kyverno yeah. is still blocked. That one's been blocked for a long time. Might might need to close that one. How how is that going? I know that you all made some process changes recently. Yeah, sorry, my internet is I guess being very slow. I was gonna pull up that board, but um, <laughs> yeah, I think it, it's mostly going well. I think we've had a couple um, active ones recently. I think Eddie, you were a lead on one of those too, right? That, if, so maybe I'll take, let you take this. Um, I I participated in the Open FGA uh, one. Um, I formed some opinions during the process uh, that I think might uh, be reflected in uh, some documentation changes soon, uh, but it was uh, really refreshing working with the OpenFGA folks because their level of enthusiasm for the self-assessment and the joint assessment it was was palpable. Um, and so that was, that was really, really refreshing uh, compared to some of the other projects where the the emphasis has very much been on, do we have to do this? Uh, it, it, right. As soon as there's an obstacle or a difficulty, uh, there's kind of a, a drop off in communication. Um, the open FGA one was, was really, uh, yeah, a breath of fresh air for sure. It was, it was really, really nice working with them. Awesome. Thank you for that. Bob made a comment that they reached out and said how well the process was going. So that's that's great. Um, any other updates from tag security? Any other items you want to bring to the TOC's attention? I think the big one we wanted to make sure we highlighted was um, this upcoming work with the OpenSSF um, for, for you all. Um, and potentially also this blog as something to, you know, to share with your networks if there's anyone who might be interested in, in that. Awesome. Um, so if anybody is listening to the recording or live on the call, if you're interested in getting involved in tag security, they have a lot of links that um, are available on their repo and also um, on their website. So thank you all yes. so much. Great. All right. All right. Tag contributor Thanks, strategy, Jill. Josh and Don, over to you. Josh, did you want to drive? Um, <clears throat> I suppose I can. The question is, it's been a while since I tried to share screens. Do you want me to share the doc? Um, oh. Yeah, why don't you go ahead? Yeah, I can do that. Just because I haven't tested sharing screens on Zoom lately. and <laughs> Not a worry. All right, I assume everybody can see that. Yeah. Oh, that. Um, yeah, I mean, if we're going to go over the, the overall sort of you know, sort of summary of situation of, of tag contributor strategy. And I find it interesting that we're back to back with tag security because you have the two tags whose job is more helping like all of the projects than um, owning projects. Um, the um, And we're having a little bit of a struggle because when this tag was founded, it was founded using the staff of OSPOs of a number of sponsoring companies uh, for the CNCF. Um, and a lot of what the tag does requires a certain amount of experience in running and administering open source projects. Um, 
And since that time, um, a lot of companies have slashed their OSPO staffing. Um, so we just have a much smaller pool of contributors to draw from. In places where we can use entry-level contributors um, uh, to help to assist projects, we've been doing so. Um, but I mean, for example, for some things like say governance reviews, um, I helping projects come up with plans to recruit new contributors um, and a lot of other things that requires somebody to have done things before um, rather than, than this being their first real engagement with the open source community. Um, and as a result, you know, sort of rebuilding um, our pool of contributors, which, you know, I'd say three years ago, um, in terms of the regular participants in the tag, it was probably something like, um, um, uh, you know, probably something like 10, 12 people, and it's now more like four or five, um, except for a couple of specific areas. Um, the, um, so um, I, let me go through, um, and, and feel free to interrupt me at any time. Uh, I actually have a question for yeah, you, Josh. Yeah, go ahead. Um, and mm -hmm. I, I cannot recall if I have asked this of the tag in the past. Mm -hmm. um, I know tag security's security assessment process defines a lead in security reviewers to kind of provide that apprenticeship, for lack of another term, mm -hmm. to be get that education and that experience about what are those things that we're looking for, or why are we approaching it a particular way, and kind of build that expertise within the community. Is that something that could be beneficial here, mirroring a similar process? Yeah, it it depends on who the volunteer is, um, and and part of it that we've been starting with, and Ali and I have been working on this, is is you know first of all having a written guide for how to do a uh, governance yeah. review, for example. Um, the um i uh, you know and then and but it depends on who the volunteer is right because uh what we've been mainly targeting is somebody who actually has been heavily involved maybe even leading um an open source project or team for a couple of years um i because you know, somebody who joins us and they say, hey, I'm learning to contribute to open source. Starting with reviewing project governance is not really a good place to start because they really don't know what they're looking at. It would be the same thing as somebody volunteering for tag security who had never programmed before, if you follow me. Like they just got out of coding school and they're like, hey, I'm going to volunteer for project security, even though I've never actually deployed code in production before. Um, I, what they can do is very limited. It'll be like a couple of years before they can do anything on their own, um, um, because they don't have the background knowledge. So, um, the, um, um, so, um, and it just means drawing from a smaller pool because if you're looking for those experienced people, there's fewer of them. They have more time conflicts already because they're responsible for things. Um, and, and we're feeling that particularly right now because, of course, um, we got hit with nine requests for governance reviews um, just as Ali was going on PTO. Um, and right now we only have three experienced governance reviewers. Um, so one of them is out. Um, so we're a little backlogged on that. I do feel like though a lot of a lot of the work in particular that that Ali has done with the issue templates, mm -hmm. the the how to document that you know the team is working on, I feel like we're starting to position ourselves to be able to do more mm -hmm. of this mentoring for other people. It's just that right now we got hit with the whole bunch. We somebody on holiday, um, so we're we're pretty far we're pretty far behind. But I don't think it's I don't think it's super grim. Like I think we're I think we're in a position that in a few months. I think we can maybe dig ourselves out of this if we get a couple of a couple of extra reviewers. I think we're I think we're working on the right things to make this better. Okay, that's super helpful. Yeah. Thank you both. Yeah, and 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 some things we've effectively dropped because we don't currently have staffing for them, um, which is is what you do. Like 
Um, Dave Studio was running the maintainer circle um, I for a while after Paris left the tag. Um, and I he has a new position and can't do that anymore. Um, and and that's been the you know our our, our turnover story in general. Um, the um, and um, so we're looking for somebody else to do that. Um, uh, that may actually proceed because again you can divide up some of the work. Uh, because if I had somebody reach out to me who doesn't necessarily know um, what projects are facing, but they can maybe do the logistics of scheduling um session leaders and everything else which is the majority of the work for maintainers are um, um is just basically event scheduling so is that um, something we could potentially leverage cncf staff to assist with maybe none of the staff have stepped forward from which i've assumed since they're all aware of it i've assumed that they don't have the bandwidth right now okay um i i for anybody in the toc who's not aware um we have several CNCF staff who are active in the tag because there's so much overlap between what we do and what the project team does. Mm. Um, so um, I, I think the staff are pretty aware of um, where we're fully staffed and, and where we're not as a tag. Um, and and uh, you know, I'll point out that one of our most active participants, um, uh, Rian, is actually a member of the CNCF staff. Yeah. Um, so. Um, the, um, so if you look at the different things that we do, um, right now, I, um, we've got project governance where we're actually closing in on having most of our documentation done, which was the original effort of project governance, just writing up what is good governance for projects? How do you do that? Um, and we had a long list of documents that we wanted to offer for that, um, I uh, and we've got most of them done um, um, and, and are closing in on, on getting the rest. And then from there, it's mostly governance reviews. Um, the um, um, uh, maintainer circle I just talked about, um, uh, but that can hopefully resume sometime once we have um, event coordination. Uh, contributor growth has been a little um, has has been extremely spotty, um, which is sad because it's one of the primary areas where projects reach out to us because they don't know how to recruit contributors um and we're currently in a position of trying to recruit contributors who can help run contributor growth ourselves um the um the the people who were primarily involved with that uh, moved on left the tag as as happens and we've had a number of people who are involved with that as a secondary responsibility but it hasn't been giving projects the level of support or importantly um, completing the list of guidance um, uh, that that we have um, on our, on the project boards for that. Um, the um, and again, it's the same issue with governance where you need people at least who have been around the block once for them to be effective, right? They have to have had the experience of running at least one project, um, and that's just a much smaller pool of recruits um, than people who are brand new. Um, the um, um, where the uh, tag is currently has a whole ton of activity is accessibility. Um, as in, um, I, Catherine started the um, accessibility working group, which they've really been primarily focused on deaf and hard of hearing. Um, that provided an opportunity to um, recruit a whole bunch of new participants, people who had not been even active in the CNCF before. Um, I, and as a result has had a lot of stuff going on. Um, they have been working with, um, the CNCF events team, um, to make events, uh, more accessible to people with hearing disabilities, um, um, as well as publishing a number of guides, um, and performing another, a number of activities, including being sort of the mainstay of our in-person activity at KubeCon. Um, the, um, I... I know that we discussed at the last KubeCon the possibility of splitting out the accessibility working group into its own independent group. Um, the, um, but we haven't really proceeded on that because we don't know what that looks like, right? Is it going to be a new tag? 
um, or is it going to be something else? And, and we've been waiting for the TOC to define something else. Um, in the meantime, though, members of the deaf and hard of hearing working group um, have been getting involved in other areas um, of the tech, um, I, uh, which has been extremely helpful. So um, the um, um, and, and also helpful for the rest of us in getting used to how do you run a Zoom meeting when some people in the Zoom meeting can't hear um, because there's the written guide and then there's actually doing it, um, which which requires some practice. Um, uh, the other part is mentoring. Um, and this is an area where it's mainly led by staff under the aegis of the tag. Um, and, and primarily because it is a requirement since they actually, staff actually run this, the mentoring working group has been primarily focused on LFX. Um, we have to do's out and we've discussed with a number of possible new uh, volunteers um, becoming more active in other mentoring programs. Um, I, you know, um, our, our main way to, you know, because we have an interest in outreach, uh, we have an interest in doing more organized project outreach around Google Summer Code and Google Season of Docs um, for cloud native projects, um, as well as um, um, looking at taking some of the Kubernetes mentoring programs um, and getting them to shape where they could potentially get implemented by other projects. Um, um, and those are important because uh, some of those are mentoring programs aimed at higher level contributors, right? Because things like LFX outreach and stuff are aimed at recruiting brand new contributors. Um, I, uh, we also need mentoring for hey, how do you take a regular contributor and turn them into a maintainer? Um, uh, which is a critical issue for projects. And uh, Kubernetes has had a couple of programs for that. Um, uh, they're not currently very well documented. Um, and, and that's an area of potential future work. Um, and, and I think that's sort of the, the state of where we are. Anything you want to add to that, Dawn? No, I think that's I think that's about it. Um, the only thing maybe you didn't talk about was the the projects that we have engaged right now. Maybe that would okay. be worth a little more detail. Yeah. Well, Kubeedge was a, the most recently completed governance review, um, and we've done a bunch of sort of interactive advice. Knative is busy reorganizing their governance. Um, um, I because like Istio, they have a legacy of governance that was set up for when the project was under Google. Um, some of which is no longer really ap applicable, so they're rewriting that. Um, and we've been giving them some interactive advice. Um, I when I when I went through and did the sort of project paperwork check for new sandbox projects, um, I flagged Atlantis's sort of lack of um, uh, governance um, or contributing guide, and they reached out to us on okay, how do we write these things? Which is always nice. Um, I, you know, and there's been a little bit of, of interaction with some of the other sandbox projects, but but Atlantis was the main one to do substantial work. Um, have there been any kind of observations or trends associated with some of the governance that you've been reviewing? I know that we have a wide variety of governance patterns across cloud native projects. And as projects mature, we expect to see kind of improvements and iterations and development upon that. Is there anything that's more prevalent than others or where you see projects continually struggling? Um, so there's a variety of areas, right? Um, and and a, a lot of it depends on how the project originated. For projects that originated as a internal project of a one sponsor, right? What they struggle with continuously is promoting leadership that doesn't work for that sponsor, right? That isn't employed by that sponsor. That that's a tough thing to do, um, and and projects struggle with it. Um, um the um um and and that's sort of one trend um and so that's both a, a sort of contributor recruitment issue and also um a governance issue um uh because 
when all of your maintainers work for a single employer, no matter what you've written down and what you intend to do, um, a certain number of decisions get made at the employer. Um, and then that's um, um, very upsetting to people who don't work for that employer um, and, and discouraging to contribute. And so that's sort of the long um, uh, you know, struggle in how to recruit these people. Um, particularly with the projects that we've seen where the struggles become really chronic um, are the projects that exist within the CNCF in a competitive space. Um, the um, things like um, service mesh, et cetera, where there's several relatively technically mature competing projects. Um, it, it can make it very hard for those projects to recruit new leaders leadership when they are effectively in direct competition with other CNCF projects. Um, the, um, uh, the second area, honestly, is just sort of governance completion and actually executing on the governance stuff, right? So when we get to that review for graduation, um, what we often find out is that if the project has you know, sort of full written governance, parts of that governance have not been exercised in some time. You know, theoretic, for example, theoretically, they're having biweekly public community meetings, but when you actually look up the meetings, you discover that the majority of them have been canceled or the majority of them were not recorded and there's no notes, so you don't know what happened. Um, and, and importantly, members of their community don't know what happened. Um, the, um, um, uh, the, um, and, you know, and then that sort of leads into the other sort of big thing in the question that we get from projects all the time, right, is that all projects have um, struggle to recruit as many new contributors as they would like. Um, the, um, and there's a certain amount that we do with projects in terms of, you know, hey, do you have all of the bits of onboarding? for contributors, um, I, because often the answer is no, um, and that's something the projects can do. Uh, but even if you have all the bits of onboarding, you often it's often difficult to get as many contributors as you would like to get. Um, I, uh, because again, there's a lot of projects all of which would like to have contributors, and, and also it's often difficult even for people who are working in a particular area that the project is in, to get enough time in their workplace uh, for them to make meaningful contributions to a project. Um, the, um, so I would say those are, those are the major trends. Did I miss anything? No, I think that summarizes it. Thanks, Josh. Thanks, Don. Um, any other updates? Any questions from TUC members or others on the call for the tag? Okay, um, quick update. I did put out a call to the governing board in the tab just now to see if they can identify potential individuals um, to participate and contribute. We'll see where that goes. Um, it was a soft call, so um, mm -hmm. we'll see what they can come up with um, during that time. As yeah. far as the previous request last year on the Deaf of Heart of Hearing working group um, and kind of the future direction of that, um, we did have an open ask to the governing board. It seems to have fallen off the radar. So um, we'll likely pick that back up again, um, understanding kind of where that group can be the most successful, either continuance within tag contributor strategy or as part of a more longstanding program within CNCF or even LF might be beneficial to explore as well. So if that group has recommendations, um, I think that would help drive some of the conversation and kind of re renew those discussions. Um, yeah, I mean, I'll, I'll admit that I'm somewhat, I uh, conflicted just because in terms of the number of people that working group is the busiest part of our tag. Yes. So I'm not exactly eager for them to go somewhere else. Understood. Um, the, um, particularly because we'll probably also lose one of the three tag chairs in the process because, because, um, I don't expect that Catherine's going to want to split her time. Yeah. Um, 
did you get any feedback on on the paperwork check for sand, sandbox projects? Uh, yes, I should have gone back out on the mailing list. Um, so the TUC okay, is supportive. I, I haven't caught up with email, so. Yep, uh, TUC is okay. supportive of you all continuing to do that as long as you have time, capacity, and resources to be able to do so. Um, it was recommended that, if possible, understanding that you do have contributor constraints to rotate that. Um, mm -hmm. Maybe that's a good opportunity for new contributors to the group to kind of jump in and, and understand and let's start yeah. learning a little bit more about project governance processes. But yes, yeah. it, it's beneficial. It's one less thing we have to look for. Yeah. Well, that was one of the things I would thinking because the paperwork check is a lot lighter than a governance review and it's something that i could potentially give to somebody who's relatively new um to the cncf with a set of written instructions right like um the um it takes somebody with some development experience to really give a project interactive feedback on their contributor guide for example but checking whether or not there is a contributor guide and whether or not it covers certain things that's something that somebody can do um who, who who's a lot closer to the beginning stage. So yeah. Yep. It's also a good indicator for where the project might need to focus their energies immediately when they join the foundation. If they've got everything in place, great. They can start um, continuing on the maturity cycle. But if they are missing some contribution guides or governance structure or things like that, that would inhibit their success. Um, those are obviously the next step recommendations once they are accepted to begin working on. So it definitely has value. Um, any other questions from anyone on the call on these topics by tag security or tag contributor strategy or otherwise? All right. Hearing nothing, I will uh, close the meeting and give you all 14 minutes back in your day. Thank you so much for the deep dive. We really appreciate your time. Later on. Bye.